The oral tradition of the Vedas Sruti consists of several pathas, recitations, or ways of chanting the Vedic mantras. Such traditions of Vedic chant are often considered the oldest unbroken oral tradition in existence. The fixation of the Vedic texts, Samhitas, as preserved dating to roughly the time of Homer, early Iron Age, UNESCO proclaimed the tradition of Vedic chant a masterpiece of the oral and intangible heritage of humanity on November 7, 2003. Wayne Howard noted in the preface of his book, Veda Recitation in Varanasi, the four Vedas Rig, Yajja, Sama and Atharva are not books in the usual sense, though within the past hundred years each Veda has appeared in several printed editions. They are comprised rather of tonally accented verses and hypnotic, abstruse melodies whose proper realizations demand oral instead of visual transmission. They are robbed of their essence when transferred to paper, for without the human element the innumerable nuances and fine intonations, inseparable and necessary components of all four compilations, are lost completely. The ultimate authority in Vedic matters is never the printed page but rather the few members who are today keeping the centuries-old traditions alive. Topic. Tones Vedic chantings use four tones, udatta udatta middle tone, anuda adda anadatta lower tone, svarita svarita higher tone, and diga svarita dirjasvarita high tone extended. These are usually marked with intuitive svara marks, and underline for lower tone, a small vertical line above the letter for a higher tone and two vertical lines for diga svarita. Topic. Pathas The various pathas or recitation styles are designed to allow the complete and perfect memorization of the text and its pronunciation, including the Vedic pitch accent. Eleven such ways of reciting the Vedas were designed, Samhita, Pada, Krama, Jutta, Malara, Sika, Reka, Dwaya, Danda, Ratha, Gana, of which Gana is usually considered the most difficult. The students are first taught to memorize the Vedas using simpler methods like continuous recitation, Samhita Partha, word by word recitation, Pada Partha, in which compounds sandhi are dissolved and Krama Partha, words are arranged in the pattern of Ab B C C D. Before teaching them the eight complex recitation styles, a pathan is a scholar who has mastered the pathas. Thus, a gana pathan has learnt the chanting of the scripture up to the advanced stage of gana. The gana patha or the bell mode of chanting is so called because the words are repeated back and forth in a bell shape. The sonority natural to Vedic chanting is enhanced in gana. In Jatapatha, the words are braided together, so to speak, and recited back and forth. The Samhita, Pada, and Krama pathas can be described as the natural recitation styles or Prakrutapathas. The remaining eight modes of chanting are classified as complex recitation styles or Vikrutapathas as they involve reversing of the word order. The backward chanting of words does not alter the meanings in the Vedic Sanskrit language. Oral transmission Prodigious energy was expended by ancient Indian culture in ensuring that these texts were transmitted from generation to generation with inordinate fidelity. Many forms of recitation or pathas were designed to aid accuracy in recitation and the transmission of the Vedas and other knowledge texts from one generation to the next. All hymns in each Veda were recited in this way, for example, all 1,028 hymns with 10,600 verses of the Rig Veda was preserved in this way. Each text was recited in a number of ways, to ensure that the different methods of recitation acted as a cross-check on the other. Pierre Sylvain Filiozat summarizes this as follows. Samhita Partha, continuous recitation of Sanskrit words bound by the phonetic rules of euphonic combination. 
Pada Partha, a recitation marked by a conscious pause after every word, and after any special grammatical codes embedded inside the text, this method suppresses euphonic combination and restores each word in its original intended form. Krama Partha, a step-by-step -step recitation where euphonically combined words are paired successively and sequentially and then recited, for example, a hymn, word 1 word 2 word 3 word 4, would be recited as, word 1 word 2 word 2 word 3 word 3 word 4. This method to verify accuracy is credited to Vedic sages Gargya and Sakhalya in the Hindu tradition and mentioned by the ancient Sanskrit grammarian Panini dated to pre-Buddhism period. Krama Partha modified, the same step-by-step -step recitation as above, but without euphonic combinations or free form of each word. This method to verify accuracy is credited to Vedic sages Bhavravya and Galava in the Hindu tradition, and is also mentioned by the ancient Sanskrit grammarian Panini. Jutta Partha, Dvaha Partha and Gana Partha are methods of recitation of a text and its oral transmission that developed after 5th century BCE, that is after the start of Buddhism and Jainism. These methods use more complicated rules of combination and were less used. These extraordinary retention techniques guaranteed the most perfect canon not just in terms of unaltered word order but also in terms of sound. That these methods have been effective, is testified to by the preservation of the most ancient Indian religious text, the Raveda Example of a text with nine words in different padas are mentioned below. <laughs> <laughs> Divine sound The insistence on preserving pronunciation and accent as accurately as possible is related to the belief that the potency of the mantras lies in their sound when pronounced. The shakas thus have the purpose of preserving knowledge of uttering divine sound originally cognized by the rishis. Portions of the Vedantic literature elucidate the use of sound as a spiritual tool. They assert that the entire cosmic creation began with sound. By his utterance came the universe. Brihadaranyaka Upanishad 1.2.4. The Vedanta Sutras add that ultimate liberation comes from sound as well. Anivriti Shabdat. Kachayana likens speech to the Supreme Brahman. He uses the Rigvedic verse: Four are its horns, three its feet, two its heads, and seven its hands, roars loudly the threefold bound bull. The great God enters mortals. Rig Veda, IV. 58, 3. To assert this claim, Kachayana explains that in the verse, the four horns are the four kinds of words, i.e., nouns, verbs, prepositions, and particles. Its three feet mean the three tenses, past, present, and future. The two heads imply the eternal and temporary words, distinguished as the manifested", and the manifesta. Its seven hands are the seven case affixes. Threefold bound is enclosed in the three organs the chest, the throat, and the head. The metaphor, bull, vrishabha, is used to imply that it gives fruit when used with knowledge. Loudly roars signifies uttering sound, speech or language, and in the great god enters mortals entails that the great god speech enters the mortals thus primal sound is often referred to as shadda brahman or word as the absolute maiti upanishad states he who is well versed in the word brahman attains to the supreme brahman vi.22 Mantras, or sacred sounds, are used to pierce through sensual, mental and intellectual levels of existence all lower strata of consciousness for the purpose of purification and spiritual enlightenment. By sound vibration one becomes liberated." Vedanta Sutra 4.22 See also Brahma Samhita 
Interpretations of Vedic mantras Shrauta Svadhyaya Notes <laughs> <laughs>